Hi, Peer Virtual. I'm Liz, and I'm here today to share with you the WSL acquisition experience. This experience is for anyone developing in Visual Studio who has code that they want to build or test in a Linux environment, but they don't have the Linux environment set up. If you aren't familiar with WSL, it stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux. Think of it as a managed virtual machine running a full Linux kernel with its own file system that you can access from your Windows command line. Leverage all the strengths of Unix systems and your favorite Unix utilities from Windows. A great use case for WSL is testing cross-platform code. In Visual Studio 2019, we added native support for WSL to our C++ cross-platform tools to both the CMake and the MS Build workflows. This meant that you could start developing for Linux from Visual Studio without the overhead of an SSH connection. We can automatically detect your available WSL distributions and surface them as available Linux targets during your project configuration. We started to wonder how we could make Linux development from Visual Studio even more accessible and even less work before a developer sees their code executing in a Linux environment. This is why we created the WSL acquisition workflow. To use the WSL acquisition experience, your Visual Studio is going to need the desktop development with C++ workload, as well as the Linux and embedded development with C++ workload. I'm a CMake developer, and I've just created a new project, and I want to be able to run this code on Windows and on Linux, but I'm just getting started, and so I don't have a virtual machine set up for my Linux environment yet. If I go to my targets dropdown, I can see that I can target Windows, my local machine, or I can create a Linux environment. This brings up the WSL acquisition workflow. The WSL acquisition workflow begins by checking that your system has the prerequisites required in order to support a WSL installation. Depending on whether you're in a virtual machine or not, you may see a different set of prerequisites evaluated. So we can see that there's something we need to do before we proceed with the installation. We need to enable nested virtualization in our virtual machine. So let's apply this fix and then come back to the workflow. So from outside our virtual machine, we've enabled nested virtualization and we've restarted our machine. Let's refresh our system check values and see whether we're ready to install WSL. We are. So what we're seeing here is that we need to enable some Windows features before we can proceed with the rest of the installation. So let's run the install. Because we modified a Windows feature, we're going to need to restart and we'll come back after our restart. Welcome back. We've restarted our computer and now we're ready to proceed with the rest of the installation. So what's happening right now is that we're installing G++, GDB, rsync, make, cmake, zip, all of the tools that you need to actually build and run and debug your cross-platform code in a Linux environment. Once the developer tools are finished installing, we're going to be able to finish the workflow and see our project retargeted to our Linux environment. So all we have to do is press F5. Our installation was successful. We're going to click finish and return to our project. Our project was automatically retargeted to our new Ubuntu distribution. So now our CMake cache is being configured and we're going to be able to set a breakpoint. Let's make a change and debug our code. And so this is building our code in the Linux environment 
launching the debugger, and allowing us to see our output in our Linux debug console window, all within the IDE. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the WSL acquisition workflow, as well as all of the other great tools that we have in Visual Studio for cross-platform development with C++.